Um, I want to introduce the next speaker. It's uh, Gilfried Fuchs Ronda. Um, he's going to talk about the Austrian e health system. A lot of projects, so give a warm welcome. <laughs> Hello. Um, like I was introduced, my name is Gerfried Fuchs. I'm working on Debian since about 10 years. Uh, and since two years, I'm working for SVC, the Austrian e-health system company. And the talk is about the system, um, which is in parts based and run by Debian. That's why I'm giving the talk here. First, I'm going, giving you a short overview about what I will cover. Um, the first part will be a description of what the company actually is, then what the Austrian eCard is, what it is for, um, the eCard project itself, and the last part might be the most interesting for those that are interested in the technical aspects, which will be more in detail explained later in the week. Um, this talk is sort of two, uh, split into two parts. The part today for the general public and the part uh, which goes more into the de details and the issues we are facing, that part will be held on Friday. So, friends. Chip card, um, yes, a uh, company for running the system. And it was published in February 2001 by paragraph 31 of the Austrian uh, law. It is owned uh, to 100% by the Hauptverband, the Sozialversicherungsträger, um, which is yeah, the main association of the Austrian uh, social security insurance uh, institutions. It is, an, it is organized at a private limited uh, company. This is what the GSMBH means. Um, and the mission of the company is to establish, to implement, and to operate and extend the LC, which is an yeah, electronic system for multiple applicative smart card system uh, within the Austrian social security sector. And... Yeah, the know-how of system development and operation is also based within our company, especially in the area of health uh, telematics and e-government. So the e-card system is not only for the health care, but also for e-government. I will shortly cover that, but it's more or less uh, a side topic. Um, now, a short overview about what the Austrian e-card actually looks like and what does it store. The e-card has two sides. One is the front side, which has the chip on it. It stores the title, uh, academic title, first name, last name, um, the Sozialversicherungsnummer, which is an insurance number unique to the person. Um, 
and the card number on the left hand side below the chip. On the back hand side, it is the uh, European health card which can be used in any country, not only limited in the EU, in, in the European Union, but also across the world. If you are in health problem, you can use this card to get identified and get uh, the service of the practices, of the medicine practice. It stores also the same information mostly, which is on the front side. Additionally, some, some unique identifier number and the date uh, until which is, is, it is valid and also which insurance company you're enrolled for. The key card principle means um, the e-card contains identification data, like a unique key, all this information that is printed on it. The only additional data that is not uh, printed on the card itself is the sex of the person uh, that's also stored on the card, but that's the only non-visible card uh, information stored on the card. Um, it is not a carrier of applications. The applications are stored on the systems of the practices. It is uh, meant as an access key and it just works as an access key to the system-based services. And this access key is unique within the whole system. There are some RSA keys and um, some hashes are used um, on the chip which are meant to identify you and make the communication between the doctor and the insurance company encrypted and safe. Um, lost tokens, lost key cards uh, get locked through the system so that they cannot get abused. The extended vision of the e-card usage includes social security. Um, it is meant to replace all paper-based health insurance vouchers. It mostly did that in very big parts already. When you go to the doctor, you just give them your e-card. You don't get any paper anymore from your company with which you go to the doctor, you just go with directly with the e-card to your doctor. Um, also, they, uh, there is this system called Arbeits, AUM, Arbeitsunfähigkeitsmeldung, um, which means that you're not able to work, uh, which gets stored in the system and you get the payment form from the insurance company and things like that. And there are also quite a lot of other subsystems which, are for, which were in the early years um, done through paperwork, which is now electronic based. Um, E-health, the key card for secure handling of medical transactions, like uh, the, the practicer sends uh, the data of your consulting to, to, um, to your insurance company and gets the payment for that. All this is done through the system. Um, E-government, um, it is, there's also the try to get a um, sort of Bürgerkarte or citizen card and the e-card is ready to host the information for the citizen card which, with which you can do government uh, bureaucratic things. Uh, you don't have to go to the, uh, to the different um, places anymore. You can do that online with your 
with your e-card if you have it extended to be a citizen card. And yeah, there are also some other applications for third parties which might use this in the future. There are not very many of them. I, I think I'm not, not really aware of a single one right now, but there might be future uses in that direction. And also e-commerce, um, there are some cryptographic tokens which are still unused on the chip card, which might be used in that direction. The e-card project uh, is divided into several sub-projects. Um, the main sub-project is the system integration to get all of this working. The consultant system when you are at the doctor, you put the chip card in and this consultant information is sent to the insurance company for payment. Um, the card system itself, like the card reader and things like that, and also the network, which I will cover later a bit more deeply. Call center, of course, for problems that the different practices might have with with the hardware, um, rollout and training for how to use the system, um, administ administration client of security, uh, of social security institutions. Um, in hospitals, they usually don't have a single system. They have bigger installations and require um, require to be able to administer all of these themselves, like network, um, IP address assignment, and things like that, and adjustment to the special environment. This can be done by them the, on, on their own. And there are also medical software producers who use a SOAP interface that is uh, available through the system and can do additional services for the, for the doctors. Um, a short overview about the time. It was started in 2001, but the first two years there were more or less quite a fair amount of problems of really getting started and rolling. Um, the sub-project or partial project were done or put into place between 2003 and 4. The implement implementation started in 2004. At the end of 2004, there were the first pilot medical practices put into uh, life. Test operations in 2005 and the national role nationwide rollout started in 2005. Now I'm coming to the probably most important or most interesting part of the talk, the GIN, uh, the Austrian Health Information Network. GIN stands for Gesundheitsinformationsnetzwerk and yeah, that's the English term then. Um, what is GIN? It's the e-health intranet. Um, it's the connection of the physicians, pharmacists, hospitals uh, over a broadband te technology. It uses DSL or cable modems, leased lines. Um, it uses MPLS backbone for quality of, uh, quality of service assurance reasons so that there is a uh, ensured minimum bad bandwidth available which is required for a reason that I will shortly after that uh, explain. Um, centralized assignment rules, there is a database server within our local in a, in, in a data center in Vienna which uh, runs the whole system and stores all the consulting informations, 
especially for payment reasons to the insurance companies. And there's a centralized management of the complete network. Uh, why was the chin established? Uh, for high requirements concerning security, quality, availability, and that it's scalable for up to one gigabit uh, access for, for instance, hospitals, which have, like mentioned, not just one system, like a local practitioner. Uh, they have usually a fair amount of more. Um, here's a short overview picture of the infrastructure. On the top left, we have our uh, data center where all the consulting information gets stored and all the um, information about who has a, an e-card and who is allowed to get serviced by the practices. Um, in the middle, there's the gin, um, which is scattered around the whole country of Austria. Um, there's the social insurance institutions, which also offer additional services. And there, in the gin network, you have the pharmacies, physicians, hospitals, and the likes. And there's also some value-added services, like formerly mentioned the citizen card uh, thing and some, some other similar things that would like to offer service through this network. Um, to make this all possible, there is sort of a peering point required, and this is, can be seen as the firewall to the internet. It rules who is allowed to get to which services outside the chin network and is there for security reasons mostly. Um, it is also part, uh, it was also split in, an, in its own company um, so that everything is clearly defined who is responsible for what part. Now we come to the Debian system, actually. The medical practice unit, MPU, um, we usually call it GINA um, for Gesundheitsinformationsnetzwerk Adapter, um, which is the practice unit. Um, this is the hardware that is at the practice directly. On the right hand side, uh, at the top you see the old system. The card reader will remain the same, same for the foreseeable future, though there are currently talks about getting new hardware for that done, but it probably will most, most likely be the same. It's also Linux based, but there's no Debian running on the card reader. Uh, the box below is um, currently MIPS hardware, um, which is five years old uh, or even more, and just has 256 megabytes of RAM and also flash. There are no movable parts uh, in the system, so no ventilation or anything like that, because it has to be in practice uh, offices and therefore has to be absolutely quiet. There are quite strict regulations with respect to that and other parts requirements. We are currently in the rollout of new hardware, which will be Atom based with hyper threading, one gig of RAM, four gig of uh, SS solid state disks and it has a TPM module, which we use to store the client certificate, all the communication between the boxes at the practices and the central system are encrypted for security reasons. Um, to get you an overview about some numbers, 
There are around 12,000 clients spread all over Austria from the far west to the, far, uh, to the east. And all these need to get replaced with the new hardware. So that will be quite a task. Gladly, it's not done by our company, but by the providers. They have the technicians that uh, drive to the practices to exchange them. Um, we do software updates to the systems twice a year. Um, it is done in four steps. There is first uh, the medical software producers get the f as first the new software so they can adapt to the new interfaces that are offered for different subsystems. Um, the second phase is the servers. The database get it, gets adjusted for the changes required for the new software rollout. Then there is the 300, which means uh, a sort of roll, small rollout to just about 300 clients, um, in which we test if the update really works. There is a lot of uh, internal quality assurance tests, like you might uh, expect, like, um, but we need to test it in the field because the field has a complete different, in, in some specific areas, they have a different environment than what we can do internally. So we first have this rollout of 300, and if everything goes properly with that, the rest of the world, all the rest of the 12,000 systems get updated in one single night. And this is quite a stress test for, for the whole system, bandwidth-wise uh, and everything else, because sometimes you don't reach one of the Gina boxes anymore, and you have to get them back to a decent state, because when there is really a problem with about 1,000 boxes or so, you can't send out that many technicians. Um, so the base system is currently Lenny. Um, there are a few additional packages which are mostly for internal use. Um, software distribution reasons like um, the internal use packages, like the software distribution part is actually also part of a package. And we roll out that as first and then do the dist upgrade afterwards. Um, there is a specific rescue partition, um, which usually, usually is not touched during the rollout, but some few weeks later, so that we have a fallback point. Um, the application stack, which the practices use, is Java-based. Um, they roll out also some, there's some hotfix mechanism in there to be able to update uh, some of the bundles that get rolled out for them. The rescue system is a specific partition uh, which gets booted when the system is not able to boot for 10 times in a row into the application. So when the application doesn't start up properly, you can always do a rescue and the box gets reset to a known good state from which you at least should be able to log into it again. and do the investigation, what's going on, what's the, prob what's the problem. In case the rescue system doesn't uh, fix the issue, there is a technician which has to get on site, but that's usually then hardware issues and not software related ones. So, 
that's more or less this part of the talk. Um, here again, the name of the company for your amusement. <laughs> um, like mentioned on Friday, I will go into a bit more details with respect to the technical aspects of the system, like the issues we are facing with having to update 12,000 boxes in one night. And if you have any questions, please bring them up now. Well, Austria uh, was famous for its uh, certificates on a mobile phone for a while. So it doesn't mean that now um, both can be used interchangeably, both the card and the certificate on a mobile phone. Um, you mean for the citizen card? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not really involved in that part, but yes, um, the citizen card isn't really, you're not required to have one and actually any chip card usually is able to work as citizen card. It was one of the requirements for the e-card system that it's possible to use it as a citizen card, but you're free to use any other cards or like you mentioned, mobile phone uh, for, for the citizen card for the e-government thing. I have another question concerning this health system. Uh, are the patient's records uh, retained? Are they still at the hospitals or at the primary health care? Or they are, they are in your company? In our system, we only store the consulting information that is required for, for the payment between the doctors and the insurance companies. So there is no patient data stored besides the unique key of the card. Um, but there is some sort of um, pseudonymisierungsschnittstelle, um, like the, the card gets another unique key that isn't directly related to you as person and someone having this key is not able to figure out that it would be you. You mean so, one, way, one way function? Yes. And why do you have such a large then, data center? Um, for uh, Bragging, to, yeah, and else? <laughs> well, the system is quite big for 12,000 clients across, and, and healthcare is a, a really critical system. So there is a lot of standby servers for when, when there's issue, and there's a lot of data running th over this. When you go into a hospital and see how many people are constantly getting service there, you may be able to imagine what amount of data is flowing through the system actually. It's, it's a very huge amount of data that is running through this system. And because all of it is done through encrypted channels, there's also a lot of processing power involved to get this data properly processed and in time because when you, are in, in, you have an emergency, you don't want to wait a minute or longer for, for the return of, of the, whether you are allowed to get serviced or not. Is it HL7 data or? Pardon? HL7, standard data. Um, I'm not really sure about that. Um, I don't have that information, sorry. And did you, as a company, provide all the necessary applications for everything, or just some part, maybe network part, or what? Um, well, there are different applications 
that is offered by our company, like I mentioned that AOM, the, that it, when, when you are not able to work anymore, or when you are sent from one doctor to another, that's also another subsystem. Currently, we have rolled out a, a test system for e-medication where there's checked for interactions between different medications and presented to the doctor. This is just a test system for now, but um, things like that are running through our system. There are always the medical software producers who can do additional services on top of our stack, and there are some, some people doing that. The question was because of this reason. There is a primary health care, and there is an, let's say, application for the primary health care. Then there are special applications, for example, for, for a laboratory. And then uh, in the, there, there is a hospital information system with all the different modules. It's pretty much complicated. And then some special applications, such as radiology, whatever. So uh, speaking about the public part of the healthcare, I assume that you have a public part and, a, let's say, a private part. Uh, is, it, is it centralized? Is it, is it no, unified? No. This is just for patient uh, um, payment-related things. Um, specific software which, which might be used in an, at a doctor, like for a dentist who likes to store all the um, x-ray files for, for teeth and stuff, this is absolutely not covered by this. You might want to talk to Andreas Tille, who is uh, related to the uh, Debian Mate pro project, but this system is completely unrelated to Debian Mate because it has a complete different uh, aim or target. Thank you. Finally. So, uh, I have several questions by the people on IRC that are, work, are watching your talk remotely. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I have several questions from the people sure. watching your talk remotely, and they are asking by IRC. So, I have two questions that can be put together. That is, uh, do they use a, de a standard Debian system, or do they have to use their own Linux kernel, and so on? And if there was any software in the base or system other than the internal application that needed to be added to Debian to support the project? Um, I have an understanding problem. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, there is two questions. Better now? Yeah. There is two questions. The first one, the, was there any software in the OS, in the base OS, in Debian, that needed to be added for supporting the system? your application and so on, besides what you have in Debian. Um, and another question that is coupled with this one is that um, if you use a Debian standard system and if you need a, modif a modified kernel. Um, for the first part, um, the kernel is specially tailored for the system. Um, with respect to the old hardware, there is, uh, for Java, there was this IBM J9, uh, which only offered uh, Java up, to, to, up, up till 1.3, which is quite ancient nowadays. But there is no newer virtual machine for MIPS hardware that we were able to use. So we are very glad that this new hardware is now Intel-based to be able to offer a more recent Java stack for the application developers. Um, I shortly mentioned there are not very many uh, additional packages, mostly for the system itself, the applications that are offered to the practices. Um, there is you can hook into the system directly just a monitor and keyboard and use it directly. 
um, there's a web interface offered. Um, if you hook the monitor and keyboard into it, you technically get an Emacs that displays the same web interface that you can get if you if you go directly with, with a web browser to the system, and through that you work with the system. Uh, the following question is related to the hardware. They are wondering why you are using Atom and not, for example, ARM. Um, ARM. ARM. Um, um, yes, the, in the offers for the new hardware, there were ARM pr uh, proposed, but actually it didn't deliver the, um, the benchmarks that we required for the CPU, especially with, res with respect to OpenSSL and signing. Uh, there is no floating point unit in the ARM processor, and this was one of the issues why the ARM offer was denied. And the final question is a bit off topic. And they are wondering if you could compare the Austrian system with the German one or another country. With, with it's what? a bit off topic. If you could compare the Austrian system with another country like Germany. Um, in Germany, there's a lot of talk going on. I think the system in Germany is not fully established yet. And there, there's a lot of press uh, talk going on, which might be or true or might not be completely true. Um, there's, of course, the ELGA, uh, the Elektronica, uh, Elektronische Gesundheitsakt, um, in a hot topic also in Austria, which would mean to store more patient data. Uh, but this is nothing our company is um, pushing or uh, pressing forward. We actually would have to implement what the government uh, decides in that respect. Um, in our system, there's just the consultant information currently stored and not very much more. You, you mentioned... Yes. You, you mentioned uh, there's a second key on the card that's not connected to the individual directly? Um, um, yeah, there are several keys uh, and there's also some more space on the card for, uh, which might be used for future expansions or future other services. It's not fully used yet. It has 52 kilobyte of data storage which doesn't seem a lot, but if you just store the, if, if you count the characters that are in a usual name, it might still be very much. Um, and there are just the, the key stored, the encryption unique token, which identifies you to the system. The additional keys, one of them, might be used for the citizen card and, like mentioned, future improvements in that area. So but none of the secondary keys are used for healthcare? Um, no. And uh, how much capacity is typically occupied now? Uh, pardon? Uh, um, how much of the 52K is currently in use typically? Um, I'm not, not really aware of that, but... It, it's definitely on the lower side. This is the new generation cards. The former cards had like 32 or 36. I'm not completely sure. Uh, and they also weren't completely used. Yes. One practical question. Uh, what would be the minimum requirements for someone uh, new to the system to join it? Um, Infrastru infrastructure wise you have a contract with your provider and you sort of lease the 
the hardware from them. And that's practically it. Um, it from do, what do I understood, the, the requirements for, for the bandwidth doesn't require you to have a, um, a very high bandwidth uh, connection. It's, it's rather on the low side, but there are special requirements for the minimum bandwidth that is ensured for, for all the times. Uh, what I wanted to know, <laughs> what I wanted to know, do, do you need to uh, lease a, a special line like a VPLS? Uh, no, no, it's, it doesn't have to be a, a leased line. Any DSL connection is... Just a plain internet line? Yeah. Uh, there's one more question from IRC. They wanted to know the cost of the atom box. Um, the cost of the atom box. Um, I'm, I'm, I fear I'm not allowed to give that information, even if I would have it. <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> so I was not directly involved in the decision, and I, especially in the financial part of the decision. So you were saying you were using uh, Java for a lot of your domain-specific uh, application stack. You use uh, the Debian mechanism to update that as well? Pardon? Um, uh, you said that you were, a lot of your software were written in Java yes. for the MPU. Uh, do you use Debian mechanisms to update that part? Um, no, the Java bundles, so-called bundles, are are outside the Debian package system. Um, there is, uh, it more or less, there is a, um, an, a revision number stored in the bundle, and if there is a different revision available on the, on the web, it downloads a list of, of the bundles, the available ones, and fetches the ones that are newer on the site. Okay. The, the metadata overhead would be bent with Vive, not, not the best option to put all these into DVM packages. So, if there are no more questions, I thank you very much for your attention. Um, these are the websites uh, on chipcard.rt you even can find for fulfilling the GPL. You can download the sources of the packages that we have installed um, besides our own stuff that is mostly for internal use. But thank you for your attention. See you around.